let's get into it. And we're going to be we're going to be joined later by Dante James and Paulie from Latino Slant. But let's talk about John Wick Chapter Four, the fourth and question mark final film <laughs> really? of the John Wick series. Really? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, we gotta say that to spoilers, by the way. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say it's. I I don't. I think that this brand is too. It's grown. It's grown with each film. the The fan base for John Wick has grown. Each movie's box office has been larger than the previous, uh, including uh, last night. The film did incredibly well at the Thursday night previews. It did about what eight million which is, is considered very good. It's on pace. It's going to be number one at the box office this weekend. But John Wick Chapter 4 is not not only has the best action of any of the John Wick films, uh, it may be one of the best action movies ever made, right up there with the Raid films. I think it's, it's poetic. It's beautiful. It's um, each of the action sequences in John Wick 4 are very different. Uh, the first one taking place in Osaka at a hotel slash there's a museum portion of the hotel. And, you know, there are fights with swords, arrows, and machine guns. And it's just over the top action. There's a, there's a fight on a stairway that is just insane. There's a fight in a, what do they call that? A tur- is a, t- a turner? Like when there's a, like the, a, the Arc de Triomphe. The the uh, yes the Arc de Triomphe the um uh, the uh, roundabout so to speak with yeah. John Wick in a car with no no, no doors. doors and then and then eventually a motorcycle that's just and then a top down view of a fight in some abandoned building that is right out of a video game that's just and also the film this really struck me and I didn't notice this the first time I saw it it's beautiful. It is absolutely mm-hmm. beautiful. The color, the color design, and then I saw it in IMAX. The entire building shook. There, in the, it's one of the opening shots of the movie is you see John Wick's fist just smashing, just smashing. It's just his fist smashing. He's preparing for war, and the whole room shook. It just got everybody because it is a it, look. It's a pet peeve of mine and probably yours too. I don't like when people talk during movies. You know, you can whisper during the previews. I, I really don't like that. Even if you if the previews are on, you know, maybe someone hasn't seen the trailer for this movie. Let them enjoy it. But what I like about the fist pounding and shaking, it got everybody to stop and pay attention. <laughs> there was like nobody like okay oh the oh, all right yeah yeah I, I you know it was uh that was incredible and and just now that we've come to learn this world of assassins putting out the you know there's just so much so many amazing details i'm giving sort of a broad strokes of it until we get into it but um the world of john wick the world of the assassins the the very strict rules of the marquee and then let's go into the performances um i mean keanu Reeves. Okay, let me let me just comment on what Please. you've said sure sure um, yeah comic four is not merely an action movie it's a it's it's a piece of art uh, and uh you know you you mentioned a few scenes but to me the 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 cinema cinematography i'm gonna call it uh best cinematography uh for this year I can't imagine any other film just out outdoing this. Um, the the overhead shot of of the abandoned building, we'll call it that. Um, those consisted of two one continuous shots. The the choreography of that is mind blowing. And I took my daughter, and you know I I could not wait to see her to watch her watch this movie for the first time, knowing that certain scenes were going to come up and just how how it's going to blow her mind. Um, you know, and you know. And as much as we talk about the uh, the action, to me, the story is what propels it. You know, in that first movie, it was about the dead dog, a uh, gift from his, ex, his, his dead wife. Uh, this one was about friendship and brotherhood. And you just saw those themes stream throughout the entire story. And that, to me, that's, that's, that's the perfect blending of, of a story that we can all connect with, 
with this utterly fantasy world of violence and death. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it's, you know, I haven't felt this way about a movie since Singing in the Rain, uh, even Rumble in the Bronx, um, because it's, it's taking action and blending it with its environment. Um, and that's what, that's what, this is why I call, I would say this is probably one of the greatest action movies ever made. Um, because it, it just elevates, it elevates the, the genre. And um, so, yeah, keep going. Uh, this is, you know, I haven't felt, th this is my Top Gun Maverick of this year. Uh, the movie that I'm just so far behind and uh, and we'll, we'll campaign for it for the rest of the year. Well, um, okay, okay. So there, there's, <laughs> I, we'll see, we'll see. I'll say this. It's my favorite movie I've seen this year. Now, yeah. It's it's um weird to even get this one this late. Sometimes usually, you know, here it is uh, end of March and it's like, OK, I've seen a movie that's like on my favorites list. OK, um, and there'll be a, there'll be a couple this year. I assume I assume Dune 2, if they don't screw it up, will be on that list. But uh, this just I just I, I want to see it again, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I felt that way. You know, I felt that way about um, about Top Gun Maverick. For sure. Let, let's talk about um, some of the reasons that this film shines. So By the way, my daughter says she wants to see it again, and I want to see it again just to watch her see it. Yeah, that was. Well, this that is was the fun. other thing: the running time. It's over three hours, but it, it doesn't feel it, like it. It breezes by. It breezes by, and there's very. Uh, now, my understanding is the original cut of this was like three and a half hours. And they're like, "Oh, uh, we got to cut it down," and it's like about two hours and fifty minutes. Two fifty. But well worth it. There is a post credit scene. We are going to talk spoilers later in the conversation. You will be you will be warned well in advance, and we'll put up a spoiler warning and let you all know. But um, let's talk about the performances and the different the different yeah. actors. Donnie Yen, Donnie Yen, who has been tasked with, um, he reads a name. It is John Wick. It is now he is obligated now. Um, in order really to kind of protect his daughter, he must fulfill an obligation. He has to take out John Wick. And Donnie Yen, he's not completely blind. You know, he's like, you see his eyes, right? He's got these like dark sunglasses, but you see his eyes and they're kind of white, like, mm -hmm. but he can see just like slightly a little bit. And he does this thing in one of the action sequences in the beginning where he puts these like, um, uh, sort of like um, portable like, doorbells, basically. portable doorbells. So when people like, it's so funny, people will like run, walk by them and you hear ding dong, ding dong. And then it's like, that's where somebody is. And he goes, he goes to attack them. It's so great. But uh, he does not want to do this. He has a relationship with John. He doesn't want, he doesn't want to take uh, John Wick out, but the, I'm, I'm watching and I'm going like, how is Donnie Yen at his age? Um, how is Donnie Yen at his age so good? He could, you know, obviously they must have used body doubles for some of the action sequences, right? But I mean, he is just like out of control, so good. And, and, and like, I, I'm just like, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. I mean, he's also Donnie Yen um, from the Ip Man series. Mm -hmm. You need to see the Ip Man films, uh, Ip Man, uh, whatever. He's just, he's just fantastic. And Lance Reddick um, also, who passed away like six days ago. Yeah. Uh, everyone applauded when he came on the screen. He has a very bit part in the film, unfortunately, but everyone just erupted in applause at um, w when he appeared. And uh, there's a little like tag at the end of a little tribute to him, which I'm surprised they were able to add it that late. I'm, I'm really impressed that they did I didn't that. see that. I, I, maybe at the very end, there's like a little, it's just like a little, acknowledgement okay yeah um, we didn't get that one in maybe it was only on the imax yeah uh, well, i saw an imax but, you did um, but yeah, okay uh, yeah yeah no i was really impressed and um he uh just seeing him there was great what was weird was how many times the audience stopped like after a big action sequence happened or a big thing happened people would just applaud <laughs> uh other other standouts bill skarsgård as the villain yeah. Oh my God. He is like top level bond villain. This sort of tall, the Skarsgård family, they have very good genes. Okay. He's this tall sinewy, like, and the way he's dressed in these like 
svelte outfits. A lot of the movie reminded me of comic books. Did you get like a graphic novel feel? For yeah, it? Like, definitely. Yeah, and and his character and like what's great is the um, stuff that they have him doing, you know, there's always like a thing with actors. They have like a piece of business, right? A piece of business is something that an actor does. If you're talking, it's boring to watch two people just talking. So you have to give them something to do. Usually it's a coffee cup or something to hold or a pencil to fiddle with. Um, here it's a different thing. Every scene, he has like yeah. a tiny sliver of cake. that He's just eating, having a conversation in another scene. He's like making tea it's very slow. And, and the business that they give him to do is very menacing because it's very mundane. I know this oh, is the, you, the, the tea scene. Let me talk about the tea scene. Yeah. Uh, so he grabs he grabs a little teaspoon of sugar, drops in the tea, and then he goes for a second uh, second uh, teaspoon of sugar. And he just holds it there for like mm -hmm. two seconds. And then he drops it into the tea. Yeah, it's a weird ritual. Like yeah. I love that. And then the opulence of every setting that he's in mm -hmm. where he's just like this opulent thing. And they have this giant dessert tray and like people standing around and it's just him. Yeah. It's not like he's having a party and he it's, and he's so cold. My God. Um, Bill Skarsgård. Incredible. What's so funny is if you watch him in the movie, Barbarian, completely different character. <laughs> Completely, he's he's like he's like this sort of like you know awkward kid who's like, hey, there's a mistake with this Airbnb that we're at. Go, Barbarian is on um, HBO Max right now. If you have HBO Max, and Alan and I both love that movie last summer when it came out. Bill Scars are completely different, and then uh, Scott Adkins. <laughs> oh my God, uh. Scott Adkins was he was he was like the Penguin and Kingpin combined into one super villain with those metal teeth and the and the fat suit but i guess my understanding is scott uh adkins is in real life he's a he's a fighter right isn't he an mma fighter i think so yeah um in any case he is so good as this they really built a character he's dressed he's dressed in this sort of crazy outfit with these you know all these rings and then the gold teeth and he's 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 freaking kingpin or the penguin. It's just so awesome. They play like a round of poker with um, John Wick, Mr. Nobody, and Kane, uh, played by Donnie Yen. Uh, Mr. Nobody, by the way, what a great character Mr. Nobody is with his dog. The dog was awesome. Oh, my God. Uh, I guess uh, Mr. Nobody, his name technically in the credits is Tracker, but he says just, I'm nobody. Call me Mr. Nobody. But that dog and his relationship with the dog is so great um, because what's weird is the respect, right? Both Donnie Yen, uh, Donnie Yen's character, Kane, uh, and um, Tracker, who's played by the actor, is uh, Shamiar Anderson, plays Tracker slash Mr. Nobody. It, uh, he's just, they have this respect. They, they actually really, they don't want to kill John Wick. They have to yeah so i mean that that right there is the heart of this story yeah that, yes again the heart of brotherhood and friendship and uh you know being forced to do something you you know how far does friendship go you know what and and you know we talked about the mandalorian and how we don't understand the lore of the mandalorian but but this whole assassin world uh we understand the lore of it we understand this idea of honor of rules and you know this is this is how you you do lore well, and, and and it's quite poetic uh, again it's quite poetic well no no we were talking about um i understand the lore of the mandalorian i, I just think it's stupid i just think <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whereas i understand the lore and and like the rules of the world of john wick because mm -hmm. it's explained very simply right these are the rules mm -hmm. and there are sort of uh you know nuances to the rules and whatnot um but I get the rules and they, yeah. they make sense. You're going to look, you're going to live by the sword. You're probably going to die by the sword and, or the gun, but uh, it, it all makes sense to me. I just think the Mandalorian, like there, I don't get it. It is. What's the philosophy? It's not appealing. That's the other thing. It's, it's not even appealing. It's just sort of ridiculous. Other, other, other standouts, Clancy Brown mm -hmm. in it. I've always loved Clancy, Clancy Brown. I mean, he's just like, he's such a great, uh, He's just a, such a great heavy in a movie with such gravitas. He's fantastic. 
and um, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, Hiroyuku, Hiroyuki Sanada, Hiroyuki Sanada, who's been in a lot of your favorite movies. Um, he's so great. Uh, he's he's fantastic in it as well. Uh, God, and I don't, I don't know how, do we talk about some of like his daughter is this her woman, um, her name is, well, the character's name is Akira. The woman in real life is Rina Sawayama, and she's a singer. She's actually a singer in real life. So my feeling is, is like John Wick 4 is going to do, here's here's the thing against John Wick 4 in terms of box office. One, it's three hours long, mm -hmm. so fewer screenings. Number two, uh, it's R-rated. That is going to hamper yeah. it. And deservedly R-rated. <laughs> it's very R-rated. Very R-rated. It's not going to, um, yeah, it's very R-rated. So it's not going to break 100 million domestic not this weekend anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. It's This movie is going to do very well internationally. Very well. Because, look, it takes place in all over the world in Paris. You've got an international cast. This is a movie that was made to do well outside of the United States. Not that it's not going to uh, perform well in the U.S. It will. Mm -hmm. But because of the international cast. And guess what? You know what no one's going to talk about? You don't like John Wick 4 because you're uh racist because the cast is that you know what the cat you know what's you know what no one's bragging about the cast of John Wick is diverse just because it just I don't know it, it's Well just, there's no Latinos in it. Uh, let's just Well, let's, let's, throw yeah, that out. let's get Polly on to talk about yeah. that. Polly is not Polly was not seen in this movie. But it but it's it it just it, it's it were it all coalesces and works together so well. Mm -hmm. Um, I just you know, I could sit there and this the woman who plays Akira Rina Sawayama, who's um a Japanese singer, there's this scene, she's like very loyal to her father. They have this hotel in Osaka, and uh you know, they've come here looking for John Wick and you know, she, you know, they basically just evacuate the hotel because they know something's going to go down, mm -hmm. quietly evacuate the hotel. Uh, they know that they're about to go to war. Uh, you know, they're preparing for war. She has this kind of, it's not a kimono, but she's sort of co this covering on her. She flips it off and she has like this, this outfit. She's ready to go. It, yeah. <laughs> it was so, it's so great. You're like, okay, it's happening because the first 20 minutes of the movie are just, setting setting it up setting yeah. it up and then it's well, just it's that build up i mean you know it's it's built uh the build up to the point where you get to the duel and you think is this movie over and it's like oh no it's not over it's not, yeah, he's, it's got, not over. he's got to make no, it to the morning it's like a 20 minute or so build up to the first action sequence and then every the rest yeah. of the movie is relentless it's action sequence a little bit of downtime let's reset What's happening next? A big action sequence. It's it's just unbelievable. I couldn't believe how many times like the audience just clapped. Not just for mm -hmm. like after every action sequence was over, it was like it was like an act of the movie, and just it just it was like an applause break during a comedian's like hilarious set, right? Just like oh, I have to acknowledge that that was awesome. And then and then there'll be like certain action things that happen, like certain payoffs, because mm -hmm. you get to meet, you know, beyond like some of the characters that we've mentioned, like Scott Adkins and whatnot. There's some other sort of like, you know, thugs that are that are recurring in it that you're like, oh, got to get that guy, um, you know, and all of them have all of them, you know, everything pays off with everybody. That's all I want to say is everything pays off. A lot of people have said that the movie is like it's gun fu, right? It's sort of this very artistic, and I like that they're like in the beginning, you know, in Osaka, there's there's um nunchucks, arrows, swords, <laughs> uh, the whole thing with Donnie Yen using his cane and those yeah. like like doorbells, you know. Uh I've I've never seen nunchucks used so ineloquently. <laughs> in it, it didn't matter. It was great. I know. It's so his great. first use his first use of the nunchucks were to throw it at someone. And I love I love also John Wick using the bodies as yeah. like armor. So he'll take someone out, hold them for a little bit, and then and then just like throw them and then also yeah. off the person. By and the it's way, crazy. I, I, also, I also like the addition of the Kevlar um business suits. That was so great. Um, near the and, end, and even the, the the full body armor, the full Kevlar body armor, 
Right. Uh, it, it just added an element you don't see in action films where, you know, where guns are almost meaningless at this point, but you're still going to use them. Right. Well, it's all, all, I love the fact that he had like the Kevlar suit, but he'd go like he's going around the corner. He's holding his suit like this over his head yeah. while he's, you know, shooting. They're just little. And then when he had like took off the jacket and you heard like the shells at, like falling yeah. to the ground. Uh, that that's the other thing about this movie, which it's it's not going to be praised enough for this, is the use of sound. The sound design in this thing is amazing. From the opening, with that basically just tells the audience, "Hey, shut up, pay attention. <laughs> you're about to you you're about to get learned in this film." Um, and I just I I just I I can't wait to see it for a third time. Um, yeah, waiting in the wings to join us right here is Polly from the Latino Slant. Polly, thanks for. Uh, I know when I texted you, you're. I'm waking up. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, good to see you, man. Uh, hey, you did your you did your early re or like out of the theater reaction, which was awesome to see. Uh, I'm sure you heard us for a little bit, just like I did chatting about it. Uh, wh what are your thoughts? And you know, we're we're keeping it spoiler free for this part of the conversation. Sure. Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, what's up, Alan? Good to see you. you. Hello, chat. Good to see everybody. Film threat people. Um, okay, well, first of all, um, you're a little incorrect. It's, like a, it's a big error. Uh, actually, the, the incredible martial artist from Chile, Marco Zaror, is huge. Is a huge part in the film. He's he's Skarsgård's right hand man. He's a big tall oh, guy. Oh, yeah. Stash. Mm -hmm. That guy not only is incredible in the film, right? You got to see his other films. Yeah, uh, but he's prominent. He's, I'm sorry. He's prominent. In he's pro big time, and he's got a crazy scene. When we'll get to that later, but um, he's in a film called Equal uh, Undisputed uh, Three, and uh, where he fights against Scott Atkins, who's in that fat suit in this movie. Uh, that movie's off the hook. So there's so many things to love about this film. Uh, the 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 recognition and celebration of all these international martial artists that are in this film. Uh, this film is going to be a touchstone for people who are martial artists, who are into action, who are into stunts, who are into cinema. This is a huge. This is going to be a huge win for cinema lovers. Action, you know. Uh, I. Here's my thing. I can't wait to see it again. I need to see it again. I got to see it again. Um, so, and, you know, everything you guys, you guys touched upon. And I also want to say the thing with Donnie Yen is um, you got to go. If you want, if you want OG Don, Donnie Yen, you, don't watch it, man. Don't watch it. The, what? Those are, those are fun. You, yeah, you got to watch. You got to watch Iron yeah. Monkey. Yeah. You got to watch Tiger Cage. Late 80s, early 90s, Donnie Yen is the shiat. I mean, like, you, and, and he's only 59. So he did, he did the majority of his work. You know, wow. uh, martial artists, we, we like, we train and we, just, we never stop training. You know, I'm going to be 53. And I, I, train martial, I, I train martial arts almost every day on some level. It, it's, it's just so exciting, you know, uh, just to keep, your, to keep your, your tools sharp. I saw so many martial arts um styles blended in so elegantly i don't think i've ever seen brazilian jiu-jitsu shot cinematography as well as ever before on film and those are the ones where they're doing the rolls on the floor you know and it, it, it it's almost kind of it's 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 almost in you almost don't recognize it. it's almost invisible just to you know pure action lovers that don't know martial arts too well you just think they're tumbling but again, that's the touchstone. Like, the, like those martial artists are going to be, oh my God, they got that roll into a, a busted uh, um, um, triangle correctly. Like, because, you know, that's where all these guys at 87 11 productions, you know, that's what they're cut from. They're all, you know, Chad's a, uh, the director, he's a judo black belt. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's martial arts geek heaven from, from, from that mass, from that work to that. Gracias, mi amor. From that work to um, to the cinematography, to the different styles. Now, you said something about the nunchucks. Here's the thing. That is how John Wick would use those nunchucks. Mm -hmm. What I love about that scene, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not spoiling it. 
is that it's very high techy what they're doing, what they're fighting against each other. But once they break one of those uh, cabinets and he discovers the nunchucks, he does not let those go for a long time because <laughs> he knows this is the most deadly thing I have here. If you notice that, because he never let go. It was, he threw them over his neck. He had the sword. He had the gun. Ah, oh, dude, I was just creaming in my pants. <laughs> you had the same I, reaction. I, 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 let me let me clarify okay. my, my statement. It, yes, it was inelegant, but um, it, it it felt authentic. That was the thing that. Uh, well, yeah, that it I mean, wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't used for beauty or for show. It was. It was, it was brute. Show it was as brute. a guy who is who just happened to find it, and this is how yeah. he would use it. But it, yeah, and so it, there wasn't just kung fu. There was all kinds of styles in this. I mean, Marcos of War. I mean. Uh, crazy taekwondo uh you know like it, it was just so much fun right but that almost doesn't matter because the the general audience chris and alan i feel are just going to just be so in awe of the mm -hmm. of the film work and, and yeah it, and it yeah. gets one one sequence tops another um so yeah i mean um everything you guys said uh in, in, and of course the actors and this is her, the, as far as the daughter that's her, this is her first movie ever she's ever done the the woman who played akira who's yes. like a japanese singer i mean i yep. looked her up and it's like so she's yep. a singer like it's crazy she's like this super skinny but then when she takes off that it's sort of that kimono thing and boob she reveals that she mm -hmm. has this outfit underneath and it's like she's ready for war is mm -hmm. so badass it's like it that's, yeah. the that's the first action sequence of the movie i just look it's even it was even better on second viewing i'll Dude, say that i, I can't it's, wait to see, i know because you guys saw it yeah we saw, we saw it like weeks a couple ago. weeks oh, ago yeah no. and it was like we couldn't talk about it with anybody it's how like, are you like uh, able to contain great. yourself oh <laughs> yeah exactly you have no idea yeah, yeah. It was. I'm it just was telling funny. my daughter, I'm, I'm taking you to this movie, and yeah, <laughs> you don't get did a choice. She want, did she not want to see it? She, she was like, she had never seen the first three. Um, so, but, but it uh, doesn't matter. It drops you in. It's like, yeah, no, this guy, he's an assassin, John Wick. You get it. You literally can start watching if you've never yeah. seen a John Wick movie. You can just watch four. Yeah. I, I told her about the dog, and that was it. That was the only thing that yeah, only lead up I had here. Yeah, but. uh it's fantastic. I don't want to like Polly. I know you got to run, but you also have something you wanted to plug. I want to make sure to get that in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks man. Um, okay. We're doing a special stream tomorrow on my channel and we're raising money for a fellow uh, YouTuber. He's a great voice in uh, his knowledge of DC, DC comics, all things. We're going to talk about all things, DC comics and films, which is interesting. I want to bring this up with you guys really quickly. Uh, so, um, I'll, I'll put the link if you don't mind, I'll, I'll throw the link in the chat. Yeah, but, please uh, do. We're going to have a great talk. He's a fantastic, uh, his name's 24 seven. And, uh, he, I would love for you guys to, to meet him one day, but he is a, a real true voice in, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, 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 in regards to, you know, uh, DC comics and, uh, just, he knows everything. <laughs> well, what, Anyways. What what time is your live stream tomorrow? That's at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Cool. On the, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Polly's yeah. doing this live stream. Check it out. Yeah. Uh, link here in. I'll, I'll put I'll it, throw it in the description to hit hit me with it, Polly, yeah. and then and then add it to the chat. And then also, uh, all three of us tonight at 7 p.m. Yeah. in room 213 cd at the anaheim convention center at wondercon we're doing a panel called uh, future indies you must see we'll also be joined by robert meyer burnett oh. as well as dante james probably some surprise guests come check it out because we're going to be showing things at this panel that are going to be kind of crazy i can't wait for you to see it um Pauly, uh yeah. I know you, gotta, I'm probably, you you and dante are heading down right so we I'll are there. let me uh one thing about about DC that I find very interesting, really quickly, is that Flash trailer last night. Uh huh. I was looked incredible on that IMAX screen. Yeah, it did, didn't it? And um, people are really talking about that Blue Beetle trailer that's gonna come out and uh, leaked images. I mean, it could be a good. Those could, you know, those could be bounce backs, you know, which would be really strange. I'm just, you know, but um, we'll see you guys tonight. Yeah, I'll see you yeah. tonight, Polly. I'll see you later on tonight. Uh, probably be getting there in the afternoon. I'll text you, man. All right. Cool. Alan, see, right. You, I'll see, you, tonight. see you tonight, right, Alan? Yep, I'll okay. be there. See you. Take care, everybody. Care. Later, Peace. Polly. Cool.
Uh, By the way, first, they made a mistake in our theater and they showed us the Flash trailer twice. <laughs> in your theater? In my oh, theater. That's crazy. Yeah. We are going to briefly talk spoilers. So if you would not, if you don't want the film spoiled, we're going to talk for five minutes. I have something to, I have a few things to say about the end of the movie. If you have not seen the movie, please dip out. Come back in five minutes. The spoiler warning. We're going to take the spoiler warning off when we're done talking about it. Dip out. Here is your warning. I'm going to give a count. Three. Okay, everybody. Three, two. We're not losing anybody. This is great. <laughs> we have like 550 people watching and no one is left. Uh, we're talking spoilers in three, two, one. He's dead. The end okay. of the film, John Wick. Is, <laughs> no, here's what else. He's say. dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Uh, no. We never saw John Wick die. At the very end of the film, we see a gravestone. What did he say at the beginning of the movie? The only way to leave this, at the beginning of the film, the only way to leave this life is if if I, I, if I'm gone, if I'm no longer here. And then he talks to uh, Winston and he says, hey, um, I just want to, you know, just put loving Love husband him. on my gravestone. Just put loving husband on my gravestone. Here's the thing. You see the gravestone. You, you don't see John Wick die. You do see a gravestone next to his loving wife. It, it's great closure. But guess what other movie where I saw a gravestone? It was at the end of The Dark Knight Rises. You saw a gravestone for Bruce Wayne. And guess who was alive? Bruce Wayne. I don't think John Wick's dead. Uh I think he's dead, and and I'll do it from a from a story standpoint. Uh, his death was great. His death meant something, you know. The, the the idea that he finally got his freedom, that he finally got what he wanted, that was the perfect time to die at, at that point. And and you know, I, I liken this death to Tony Stark in in uh, Endgame. You know, it's you know to to bring him back would diminish this movie. And uh, and I feel like uh, I I have to believe he's dead for the sake of uh, a well told story, because uh, I think you're going to ruin this movie by bringing him back. Yeah. So I I I think that um, I think here's the thing. If this movie is a huge international hit, there's going to be a follow up, and it may it may end up. Uh, it, it may end up with uh, continuing Donnie Yen's character, Kane, and his story with Akira and that rivalry. There could be for sure, um, it could be for sure that that there's a, a spinoff. Yeah, they, they talk, they're talking about, uh, I, I don't know if it's in production or not, if this is real, but the, the ballerina starring uh, Anna de Armas, uh, I believe that is a, a spinoff of the John Wick, of this world of assassins, basically. Yeah, so so this is what I'm saying. Isn't Donnie Yen yet uh, dead too? <laughs> Donnie Yen yet? Um, I mean, I think the implication was, yeah, uh, he's he's about to meet his daughter for the for the first time in a long time, right? Because he's and she gets, and, and, and she kills him. She kills him. She avenges uh, her father's death. No, we don't see what happens. So I know we don't, but I think that's the implication. I couldn't believe people were leaving the theater. I'm like, stick around, stick around. I was saying to people yeah. like, there's more. There's I almost more. told people. I almost told people around me. Uh, there's, there's an end almost. Why didn't you say something? Because I didn't but, want to be obnoxious. Well, in any case, in any case, um, I think, yeah, I don't think he's dead. I think we. I think you're going to cut to John Wick Five. There's going to be an opening scene, and it's going to be uh, John Wick from behind a tree. You can't kill me that easily. Try to do the I can't be ruining this movie by doing that. Yeah. There was a scene at the very, very, very end of the movie, um, effectively with Donnie Akira. Yen. You see yeah. Donnie Yen's character, and he's a, about to see his daughter, and then you see Akira approach. She pulls a knife, cut to black. Yeah, that's she kills that's... him. She kills no, him. no, no, because that's it's tragedy. It's it's the assassins can never. Even if you're freed of all your obligations for an assassin, you're always the killer. That's the point they always make. And that you're always accountable for the actions you've done as a killer. And that's this is the poetic the poetic nature of this movie. He's right. dead. Right. All right. Yeah. We are we are we lost a hundred people actually did dip out. 
So there you go. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come back. Um, any other final comments about John Wick 4? And then we've got a couple other movies to talk about. We have an interview that we're doing today as well with director Jordan Ross from The Tudor is going to be joining us uh, in about like uh, 20, 30 minutes here. Um, I just, I can't wait to see this movie again. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't felt, I haven't felt this way about a movie since, I don't know, Top Gun Maverick RRR last year. When I saw like movies that I, I want to see a second time, a third time, mm -hmm. even like, um, and it was better on second viewing because one, I could kind of enjoy like everyone else, like, oh, I can't wait. They get to see this. Uh, but yeah, I, I really, really en enjoy John Wick for chapter four and we'll see it again in the theater for a third time. You are going to go and uh, take your daughter. Or she's just going to go and see it. She, again. yeah, we, I do want to see it again. I don't know if she may go on her own with someone. Yeah. Well, there you go. Maybe what, with her boyfriend? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go, Alan. Yep. That's what it's like to be a father to a daughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, the great conversation, though, afterwards was, uh, you know, because I asked her, we'd like, uh, like Akira there, would you avenge my death? And she said, no. <laughs> I, I told her, I told her I would avenge your death. And she goes, well, yeah. and she goes yeah, that's because you're my father. <laughs> go, uh, oh my God. I know. So, yeah. so if, you know, someone kills me, uh, I can completely count on my daughter doing nothing. Well, there you go. She hasn't quite gone through the training yet. I know. So. I told her she could train. There's still time to train. 